Hi, everybody. Thanks for attending the talk. Uh, I'm Dima from Fortify, and today I will tell you about how we're building secure StarCraft support to our MPC wallet. And actually, all the hard work in the project was done by Yar and Aviv, who are also here in the audience. Um, so for those unfamiliar with MPC Wallet, let me give you a little bit of background. So um, MPC Wallets are primarily used by organization. So there's a set of users who want to jointly uh, use the same set of keys. And in an MPC Wallet, the keys aren't actually stored on, on any single device. Um, they're sharded between multiple devices, which could be mobile devices of users. Uh, it could be servers in the cloud. Um, and when a user submits a transaction, for example, by using uh, a DAP and a browser extension, then the wallet can actually enforce a transaction policy that's defined by the organization and that, which determines which users need to approve uh, each type of transaction. And so the required set of approvers, they get a um, notification on their phones, they can review the transaction, and once they approve the transaction, uh, the MPC protocol, the multi-party computation protocol, runs between the different uh, uh, nodes, and the protocol produces a signature, and the signature is returned to the DAP. Um, and let me give you a little bit more context about the wallet that we're, we're building. So we're building an institutional MPC wallet that's focused on DeFi use cases. Uh, what that means, we have our own browser extension uh, and as well as an API for programmatic use cases. Uh, we support both EVM and non-EVM chains and some of the DeFi specific features that our wallet has uh, is for example, transaction enrichment, meaning we provide a human readable description of every transaction as well as provide additional contextual information uh, that makes the approval process much more meaningful. Uh, and our transaction policy also allows encoding different types of DeFi attributes uh, to exactly set the right, uh, the right set of approvers for every type of transactions and block uh, other transactions. And the type of customers that we're working with includes uh, crypto funds, trading firms, uh, market makers, digital asset issuers, and so on. And you can see some of our investors, including a shout out to Starkware uh, here on the slide. Um, so let me now explain what's the, the core problem uh, when it comes to supporting StarkX with an MPC wallet. So um, the StarkX dApps, as many of you probably know, uh, even though they use ECDSA signatures, uh, the elliptic curve uh, in the signature scheme is not a, a, a standard curve like the one used in Bitcoin or Ethereum. It's actually a, a, a special curve that's optimized for, for generating the, the Stark proofs. And most wallets, like MetaMask, for instance, ledgers, they don't actually um, support this kind of signature scheme. They don't support uh, this curve. And so the dApps cannot really use uh, cannot really use the, uh, the wallet in the most straightforward way. So how do dApps end up still working? You know, uh, Stark dApps end up working. So there's actually a workaround that many of the dApps, uh, many of the darks uh, dApps use. What they do is they generate the Stark private key as part of the dApp in the user's browser. So the way it works is that when a user onboards a dApp, uh, the DAP requests the user's L1 Ethereum wallet uh, for an EIP712 message signature on, say, some, some, some message that includes the DAP's name. Uh, the, user, the user approves the signature on their wallet, and so the wallet provides, returns to the DAP uh, a message signature uh, on that message. And then the DAP uses this uh, message signature to deterministically derive uh, the Stark private key. And this is the private key that the user uses for their, for their L2 transactions. And this private key is stored in the browser. And notice that one consequence of this is that when the, DAP, when the user wants to perform additional actions as part of the DAP, uh, the key is already in the DAP. So the user doesn't really need to, uh, you know, the wallet doesn't, re the, the DAP doesn't need to interact with the wallet anymore. Uh, it can just kind of use the user's key directly uh, in the DAP. And so you end up in the situation, this is actually, uh, you know, we're looking at the developer tools uh, when running DYDX, you can see clearly the private star key just laying here in the browser. And I think as we, we, we kind of know by this point that this is not a great idea uh, to put private keys in the user's browser. This is, for instance, even worse than keeping it in MetaMask in an extension. This is actually uh, in the local storage of the DAP. Uh, so any, any malware on, the user, on this device, any malicious script, uh, any supply chain attack, uh, this key is susceptible. And the problem is actually worse when, when, it, when it comes to MPC wallets. So first of all, like, you know, storing the private key in a single device, it goes against everything that an MPC wallet tries to prevent of not having the key in a single point. Um, and so the key can, as we said, the key can be compromised on the client side. Uh, for instance, it could be by a malware, but it can also be a malicious user, right? Because in an organizational setting, you don't really trust any individual, whereas here, any individuals that get access to the star key uh, can just, you know, do everything they want. Um, and so, you know, another consequence is that, that the wallet can no longer enforce policy and approvals because, as we said, transaction doesn't really require uh, the wallet interacting with the wallet. Uh, another artifact is that you cannot really revoke access from a user once they leave the organization because once they, they were exposed to the key, uh, there's no going back. 
Um, and another, another consequence is that, you know, lots of these wallets, they, uh, for example, like we, we operate in a non-custodial uh, non mode, but here, the way that the dApps derive the, the key, they derive it from message signature. And message signatures are usually not treated as, as a secret, right, in wallets. And so they could be logged anywhere, they can be stored in the wallet database, and the wallet provider, because they see those message signatures, can actually derive the user's private key, uh, which kind of beats the purpose of, of non-custodial wallets, I think. And so, you know, MPC wallets provider, they end up in the situation where they either can choose not to support StarkX dApps or can they choose to support them this uh, really insecure way. Um, and I should say, we're not the only one to notice these problems. Our colleagues at Safer and on Slowmist are also working on it. They are, they're also, you know, we discussed it with them uh, and they were super helpful as well. Uh, and so when our customers came to us and they asked us to support StarkX dApps, for instance, DYDX, we were not really comfortable with this uh, insecure way. So we were looking for to do it in a better way. Um, and so over the past couple of months, we've actually been collaborating with Starkware, with Canvas, to try and come up with a better way to support StarkX. And so what we've done, um, we've done a couple of things. So first, we've added uh, the support to st Stark Curves as part of our MPC library, such that our MPC protocol natively supports uh, generating star keys and signing with star keys. Um, we added it, uh, we're adding it to our API, meaning that programmatic uh, users can just access and, 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 and be able to, to benefit from MPC uh, for Stark signatures. And we're also uh, adding a new interface to our browser extension that would enable dApps to benefit uh, from this native StarkX support. And so the benefits of our approach is that essentially you recover all the advantages of MPC wallets back. So Stark private keys never leave the wallet and this is where they belong, right? They're not on, on, on client devices. Uh, we as a wallet provider, we no longer need to use this message signature derivation flow, and so we are not exposed to the user's private keys. Uh, and you get all the benefits back, right? You can enforce organizational approval policy, you can revoke access from users. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's, we believe that's the right approach. Um, and what we'll do in the remaining time, we'll do a demo, actually a live demo, uh, when we'll see uh, how our wallet used to sign an actual DYDX transaction. So one thing is that, you know, we're building this solution, the real DYDX hasn't integrated with it yet. So what we did now is we actually modified our extension to inject a script that actually retrofits the, the actual unmodified DYDX to use the new interface of our wallet. And this is what you'll see today. You'll see the entire flow uh, with the MPC and the signature and YAR uh, will run the demo. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so I have, hey everyone, I'm YAR, I'm the DeFi team lead at uh, Fortify. Uh, what you can see here is like, uh, is on the, where's my, it's right, actually. What? Oh, okay. Uh, on the left, you, uh, you can see our uh, mobile uh, wallet. Uh, it's uh, connected to, our MP to the other MPC uh, participants. And over there, you will soon see our tr um, transactions. And on the right, you can see uh, DYDX uh, trading platform. Uh, where we can uh, send orders. We also have the uh, Fortify extension um, installed on the browser. Um, here, uh, we already onboarded a, a user uh, and in, a, in, in a way that the private key is only held inside our MPC world, so uh, the DAP never held the private key, was never compromised. Now we'll do a simple uh, order um, on DYDX. Um, let's say uh, I want to buy some ETH on the current market price and I'll place uh, my limit order. Now you can see my uh, browser extension popping up. Uh, we can see uh, that my DYDX vault is the one that is about to sign it. Uh, it's on the StarkX um, network uh, on the DYDX platform. And we can also see uh, the DYDX trading policy taking place where my user uh, for that vault has permission or has some policy uh, in place uh, to decide if I can sign this transaction or not. Once I create it, I'll move to my wallet, uh, which after the, um, after the um, policy engine decided that I can sign this transaction, got the uh, signature request. I can see clearly uh, all of the parameters of the order uh, I just um, um, sent and I can sign it. Uh, first, uh, my face ID will be verified and then the MPC uh, will run uh, against our uh, secure enclave. Uh, and now that the order is signed, it will send back to the DAP, which place it uh, and send it uh, to the StarkX uh, contracts. And uh, we can see uh, the order in place. That's uh, about it. Back, oh, sorry, back to Dino. 
Um, yeah, so this is a live demo working, so. <laughs> um, cool, so just to, just to conclude in terms of next steps, so we are uh, working with Starkware to, to standardize the wallet interface so that other so the dApps can, can benefit from it. And if you're a, da if you're a start dApp developer building on top of StarkX and you want to integrate and, and benefit from the secure, uh, secure interface, then please come talk to us. Um, and yeah, the hope that we, we, we will be launching this solution and so the institutional customers will, will benefit from the secure access to StarkX dApps. And so if you're also in, in, in an institution or a, a treasury or, or anyone that wants to securely interact with, with uh, DYDX or DeFi in general, uh, come chat with us uh, as well. And you can find more info on our blog and also feel free to reach out to me directly. Uh, thank you very much. That's the idea, at least. So, like, if you enable that part, uh, is it still safe? Um, so, it dep it's, it's, a, it's a really good question. Uh, that part would be enabled still on, on the wallet's end, and so you can, you can for example, set fine-grained rules around which type of orders would be signed automatically and which, which ones would require user intervention. Uh, you kind of shift it from the DAP to the wallet to manage, to manage it. Thank you.